Hello, hello everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of Cupid Parasite. We're on our fifth time that we're going through the prologue, so let's probably start that. We have a lot of skipping to do. Um, our fifth and final route. Although, technically not final. I think there's another route after this. After you, you've dated all five guys. <laughs> Uh, we will use our same name as before, so the last route we're doing is Alan. Alan Melville, the thieving parasite, the goth guy, the purple guy, that guy. Skipping that. <laughs> um. Skip, 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 skip. You know a few things about him from, like, the prologue previously and some other routes. Um. He is an incubus, so he is... The only non-human uh, character that we can date, although if we consider Raul being like the reincarnation <laughs> of Alexander the Great, it, that's that's an outlier. He's technically human, um, but yeah, he's like the only non-human character we can date, which brings some curiosity of like what happens if we fall in love with him. As like, do we become human because we became human with everyone else when we fell in love? Or we'll have, have like some other rules where either we keep our divinity because, I don't know, it seems like when gods fall in love with gods, they remain as gods. But I don't know, maybe if Lynette falls in love with an incubus, maybe she'll become a succubus? Just becomes what the guy is. <laughs> Oh, that might be a little interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'll like Alan, though, because, I don't know, his character is a little bit... I described before, a little slimy. Uh, I think Ryuki mentioned that that he's a little bit too moist. Um, but yeah, he likes... He likes dating girls that are, like, currently in love with someone else, hence the thieving parasite. So I'm also wondering if we have to, like, fall in love with someone else. Before Alan will try to steal us away. But we'll see. He he is advertised as, like, the penultimate boy. He's he's on the cover, and all the walkthroughs say, do Alan last. So maybe they'll, they'll do something crazy. I don't know. All right, so now we're just going through the prologue. So many not choices. <laughs> We have to get to the part where there's like only a few choices that pop up for Alan specifically. And I've gotta do our love match test. And then do the date, and then we'll be onward. Onward to Alan. Alright, got our first choice. Uh, look at their papers. We got to... I have to, I, I want to earn that promotion. Alright, spurn. Spurn the other dudes. Not interested. We gotta meet all the other guys. This is Alan, not even interested in us. He's on the phone. Alright, Gil. Are you struggling with work or something? Sorry, Gil. <laughs> so now, it's like, now I have to like spurn all these other dudes and I'm just like, oh, I dated you in a past life. You're Owen and Shelby. God, we haven't seen Owen that much in the other routes. He was like, he was a front figure in the first two and then like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really seen Owen in the, in the two after that that we did. It's his little side story with like Melanie was really cute, and then I got kind of sad when they when they uh, shafted him and, and Shelby's route. They sent him to the prison. Uh, I read something on Wikipedia. All right, Ryuki, my boy, spraying me in the face. <laughs> Even though he's insanely rude, I have a little soft spot for him. He's funny. He's serious, and I can laugh at that. Ta -da! I better fix my makeup. Let's 
skip, 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 skip. All right, last Alan. Hey, Alan. Put the moves on me. All right, now there should be a choice here. Uh, a freeze up after hearing he's attracted to you. Huh? Hearts. He's my goth, my goth boyfriend. Attractive. Hearing that, I'm struck speechless, which just mortifies me even more. No, I am not taking that as a compliment. He just wants to share. I, I thought like you'd be. I mean, he was kind of in Gilsby. I, I thought he was like. Maybe, maybe we'll like. Maybe you'll put on the moves on us if like Gil tries to get with us. I don't know. He is he is on the cover with both. It's him and Gil on the cover. So I thought maybe there'd be some like some dynamic between the two. This is not acceptable. I slam my hands down on the desk. I'm suddenly furious at his shameless audacity. Okay. <laughs> there wasn't that much of a change between between that dialogue and the slap. <laughs> now then. Next, we have to do our love match. We have to match with Alan. Doo -doo. There you go, he's an incubus. He also wants to return to Celestia. We learned that in Gil's route. Let's try the test. Alright, what do I do? Alright, so I have to- for number one, says yes. If you catch him looking at another woman, do you instantly get jealous? Say yes. Uh, question two. Would you happily sacrifice yourself in order to give him what I, whatever he desires? Say no. <laughs> uh, do you feel like you want him by your side only when you feel like having him there? Number three says say no. Question four. Would you rather be friends uh, for a while first before we start dating? Say no. Five. When selecting a partner, are economic factors important? I also probably should have saved. Is there a bed? <laughs> uh, I can always just make a save file later. There's probably a bad end for a bad love match. Actually, it didn't. Actually, it didn't say to make a save file here. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm fine. <laughs> uh. Yeah. It says. Okay. I might be fine. <laughs> if not, then I'll, I'll I can always go back and make another another save. All right. Anywho, moving on. There's five. No. Six. Were you attracted to him from the moment you first met? Say no. Seven. While you're in class or at work, do you suddenly stop and realize you've only been thinking about him? Say no. <laughs> Question eight. Why is everything no? <laughs> Everything's no except for the first one. If he's suffering through some kind of trouble, would you prefer to suffer along with them? No. Uh, when he asks about your plans or tries to get too involved, do you find yourself trying to distance yourself from him? No. Leave me alone. Uh, nine. Or actually, just ten. <laughs> when selecting a partner, is it important for his upbringing or education to match yours? No. Do you feel like you and he are similarly attractive? Say no. Question 12. Does your own happiness depend on making sure he's happy? Say no. Do you feel that you and he share a close connection? Say no. When selecting a partner, do you think your personal history influences your decision? No. Alright. And then end. Anyway, we got mania. A mania. An enthusiastic love. A love that burns like magma for both you and your lover. These types tend to get jealous easily. Does he? <laughs> I feel like he's the one who makes other people jealous. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Jealousy. I wonder what it's like to fall in love with someone like that. Yeah, it can be hard to imagine Pasha and taking hold of us like that. You know what they say, love makes us blind. Hmm, never thought about my own love type before, so it was a good study. Alright, skip, 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 skip. Uh, we'll stop checking. We technically have already seen all the love types. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so at this point, now we just have to get to the date, which is... It's like quite a few chapters away, actually, when date week begins. Yeah, it's after Parasite House Live. Um, I will BRB and we'll be at Alan's date. Alrighty. The tweet begins. I picture all five of their faces. Time for the last, last boy. <laughs> this guy's a little weird out by his picture. I was like, I thought it was like lipstick at first, but yeah, this lipstick, lipstick is purple. It's just his tongue is like really, really red. All right, Alan Melville, let's go. Maybe Alan. Oh, that sneaky thieving parasite. Isn't he the only, only, <laughs> isn't he only interested in unavailable women? Yeah, he seems like a little off the table when it comes to dating. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. So, so I want to show him how a great a one-on-one -on -one relationship can be, but I'm not sure how you'll handle that. The more the merrier is his motto. Ethics don't factor into his mindset at all. Why not saying that is that it's normal won't be enough. In fact, I'm not even, <laughs> even I'm not convinced. You really care a lot about the Parasite 5, huh? Okay, skip, 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 skip. Alright, should dive right in. Case number 5, Alan Melville. Saturday, 7pm. Oh, a little bit late in the night. Hi, we're in a store. <laughs> Is, uh, is not the books. I, I noticed the books. There's a lot of books here for, for it to be a pillow store. Good evening! We had decided to meet up at Alan's store to start our date. He was still dealing with a customer when I arrived. Ah, welcome. Sorry for asking you to, you to come all the, the way out to my store. I'll be closing up for the night soon. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll just wait here till you... Until you're ready. I made my way to one corner of the store in order to stay out of everyone's way. For a pillow store, this place is actually pretty big. I know we lived here. <laughs> we lived here in Shelby's route. Just took the store over. Pillow Luxuria is a swanky pillow store on 9th Avenue. I only knew about it thanks to Alan. I'd never actually seen it for myself before. Ninth Avenue is mainly a high-class residential area, so I don't usually have a reason to visit. As I was looking around the shop, I heard a woman yawn from the back. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I was trying out this pill, and I guess I just fell asleep <laughs> in a store. Silly, tee. -hee. It's true. Our pillows are well renowned for the ability to deliver a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I just can't imagine all the sweet dreams this would bring me. I believe I'll take it. I'm very glad to hear it. Allow me to wrap it up for you. <laughs> That's weird. It's like, oh, try before you buy. I just have a bunch of people sleeping in a store. <laughs> wow, looks like he takes his job pretty seriously. From my corner of the store, I took a peek at Alan as he went about his task. Normally, he just talked about stealing people's girlfriends, so it was hard to imagine him with a proper job like this. But I guess if you're gonna have a store on 9th Avenue, you have to take it seriously. Ah, how lovely. Your husband is a lucky man to have the love of such a wonderful woman. I must admit, I'm quite jealous. Oh, come on. <laughs> come now. No need to flatter me. I already bought the pillow. No, no. I only speak from the heart. I do hope you grace us with your presence again. I'll be awaiting your next visit. Alan Melville of Pillow Luxuria is at your service for a good night's sleep. And so much more. Huh? <laughs> the 
There's something ominous in those words, but Alan just kissed his elegant customer's hand and gave her a sly wink. Ahaha, <laughs> you're quite wonderful yourself. And don't worry, I'm sure I'll be back very soon. Okay, oh. Your patronage is much appreciated. I'll be here, waiting. Make an Alan, make a homewrecker here. Alan escorted his last customer of the day out of the store. He then flipped the sign over to show that the store was closed. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, I didn't feel like I was waiting at all. But Alan, are you always like that with your customers? What do you mean? Like with how intimate you are with them. Most store clerks don't hold their customers' hands and they definitely don't kiss them. You're not jealous, are you? No. I just wanted to make sure you're not overstepping your boundaries. I grabbed his arm and glared at him angrily. He just ran his hand through his hair and gave me a wry smile. Don't worry. I'm just here to help them pick out the perfect pillow. It's not like I'm doing anything illegal. I hope you're right about that. It's, it's, it's all consensual, even though it's not right. <laughs> if you're really that worried, you're welcome to live here and keep an eye on me. Feel free to move in any time. Er, no thanks. I see absolutely no upside for that for me. <laughs> to that for me. <laughs> Cute as ever, I see. I've never met such a pure-hearted young lady. Alan then snickered, then wrapped his hands around my waist and drew me closer to him. Okay, we're a little, little fast here. Why don't you lay down over there? I'll help you pick out a pillow that's just right for you. Huh? Didn't we already do that the other day? Oh, that was just some random pillow I thought would be a good match. For a truly perfect fit, it should come from my store. You can even pick out your own filling. Personally, I recommend down feathers, microbeads, or polyester pellets. That other pillow was a little too thick for you. I wanted to meet you here so I could swap it out for one that fits better. Right. Well, uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> you really are serious <laughs> when it comes to pillows. I gave a small nod of appreciation, and he led me to a nearby bed. Okay, we're laying down now. <laughs> now then, take off your shoes and lay down. I'll help you have sweeter dreams than that other pillow could ever hope to deliver. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I'll show that pillow. Oh my god, okay, relax. Just the way he said that made, me, made it seem way more suggestive than the words themselves. It's just the pillow, right? Why does he have to talk like that? That's what I was thinking as I climbed onto the bed. Wow, this pillow actually feels pretty amazing too! <laughs> you like? It feels like my head is melting right, in it right into it! I never realized how nice a pillow could feel! I was impressed before, but this high-end store really is amazing. Something like this could give me a good night's sleep for sure. This is, this is definitely even better than my last pillow experience at home. As I was enjoying the incredible pillow, I felt a shadow pass over me. I opened my eyes and saw Alan hovering over me with a serious look on his face. Is he just coming in to adjust the pillow like he did before? Still, if this is how he treats all of his customers, I couldn't help but, but think that it was a bad sign. He really could get arrested for behavior like this. And, I was, and as I was thinking about that, Alan pressed the lock of my hair to his lips. <laughs> Harassment! You really should be more careful, Lynette. Laying there, completely defenseless. Men are like wolves, you know. Of course I realize that, but this is a pillow store, and you're a pillow salesman, right? True, but I'm also a man, and you're a woman. You can never overpower me. Just try not to be so careless. 
or you might become a victim. He looked at me as if he were awaiting the right response. Uh, oh, choice. Uh, I guess this one. <laughs> Either way, it has nothing to do with you. Either way, Alan, it's got nothing to do with you. I'm still a god after all. When push comes to shove, I'm sure I can take care of myself. I just glared at him and let out a little laugh that seems almost sad. I just worry about you. You're different from any other girl I've ever known. Oh, hearts. What? Different? Different how? <laughs> Don't be suspicious. Oh no! Did I let some part of my Cupid nature slip somehow? I mean, you've done that before and people just think you're weird for it. I thought I'd become human enough, but I still blurted out my question. In response, Alan kissed the base of my neck. Uh, buy me dinner first, dude. <laughs> like I don't care that I'm this close to you right now. Or how, f how you're fine living in a house with a bunch of guys. He gave me another audible kiss on the neck. I heard a laugh deep down within his throat. I have to ask, have you ever fallen in love? Do you need me to teach you how? Huh? Er, well... I want you in to enjoy that experience as a woman, so I'd be more than happy to. His hand brushed my against my thigh. He grazed it so lightly. I jerked reflexively. I think you're failing the first date lesson, Alan. Which led me to smashing my head straight into his. Oh. Ow! Ow! Unlike the last time I smacked him, this one hurt me too. I glared at him while rubbing my head. I hope you don't expect me to apologize for that, Alan. That was totally your fault. What's the point of even doing things like that? You're only interested in other people's women, right? Well, that's why I asked if you wanted me to show you how to fall in love. After all, today is just for practice, right? How am I supposed to learn how to fall in love when I know this is how you act with everyone? No woman is gonna suddenly just fall in love after you touch their thigh without warning. Huh? You really think so? Alan looked at me with genuine surprise. He honestly thought that was a winning strategy. <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> his sense of decency is completely screwed up. As his advisor, I feel like it was my duty to try to adjust his sense of morals. I asked him to sit on the bed with me. Listen, Alan. When you prioritize, prioritize lust over love, nothing good can come out of it. Only truly sincere love can last. Sincere, eh? I think it's a little too late for that. But that's the only way you can have a truly happy marriage! I don't know. I feel like there are plenty of people out there like me who are in a perfectly happy relationships. But even if you manage to find a girlfriend, I'm sure you just start cheating on her with someone new. Well, I'm not exactly looking for someone to fall head over heels for me. If you don't want to get married, fine. But as long as you're part of our company, I will try to get rid of this bad habit of yours. <laughs> Why is he paying for these services? He doesn't want to get married. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have non-stop complaints from other members. And if he did get married, I'd just end, it'd just end up in divorce and a lawsuit. I know other advisors are just focused on marriage, uh, and don't think too much about the details. Just gotta raise up those numbers. And because of that, even within our company, we have cases of members separating not long after marriage. I'm not okay with that. After all, I'm the god of love. Relationships and romance are my responsibility. Did you forget that this is a, is a practice date for you, not me? <laughs> If you don't make some effort to fix the things that make you the thieving parasite, we'll ban you. You hear me? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, cheer up, okay? For me. 
Do you really understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this is like brushing off a child, <laughs> it sounds like. Of course I do. Anyway, let's get back to choosing your pillow. I'd like to try one that's not quite so thick. Okay, let's not, let's not talk about thickness now, Alan. Alan kissed me again, this time lightly on the cheek. He really doesn't understand anything. He wandered off to find another pillow. While he was searching, I wrote down some Alan-specific ideas for our next workshop. Is that it? No, still going? Still in the store? Where are we going? <laughs> Is this our date? In the end, it took over an hour to put together my own personalized pillow. This pillow is the absolute perfect thickness and material for you. Consider it a gift. I'd love for you to try it out tonight. Alan winked at me and started wrapping it up for me. I hadn't realized until this moment, but... Wait, a gift? Yes, don't you like it? N no that's not it. It's so soft and comfy. I love it. But aren't your pillows really expensive? They are. But it's important to me that you're able to get good sleep. But you don't need me to give anything, especially not something so expensive. Or you don't need to give me anything that especially expensive. <laughs> I took out my wallet and started to run to the register, but he put out his hand to stop me. Oh, okay, CG. Okay, why why is this, this why is this look really wholesome? He looks a little worried. It's fine, really. I want to give this to you. Somehow Alan was looking at me in a way that he never had before. He was looking at me, but in a way he wasn't. He was almost looking through me, like he was searching for someone else. He brushed his hands against my cheek. But this time, it didn't feel gross at all. It was so gentle and sweet, I couldn't help but take his hand. Listen, Lynette. Y yes The atmosphere was tense. It wasn't excitement exactly, but my heart was beating faster. I just laid there, waiting to hear what he had to say. He just smiled at me, and then... We've met somewhere before, haven't we? Huh? <laughs> right, huh? What? That phrase sounded oddly familiar. I was pretty sure it was a line for one of the movies Aunt Minerva had showed me. It, is this what Alan is like when he's actually hitting on a girl? I'd nearly fallen for his serious demeanor. But in the end, I was a fool for thinking he changed so quickly. Seriously? You're trying to use a pickup line from some old movie on me? Nobody would fall for that in this day and age. Things are suddenly awkward and I tried to laugh it off. But for some reason, Alan just revealed a sad smile. I see. I guess I should have expected that. Huh? For some reason, his mournful gaze made my heart ache. Could it be... We really hadn't met before? But I seriously doubt I would forget meeting someone who clearly leaves such a strong impression. Besides, I'd only been in the human realm for six years. I felt like I'd remember pretty much anyone I'd met. Okay, maybe you think that maybe that she met him in Celestia instead and just like forgot about him maybe? Maybe that's why he's trying to get back to Celestia. I must have looked truly confused because he suddenly reached out to me. Anyway, if we keep laying around here, we won't have time for our actual date. Shall we get going? The pillow is a little bulky to carry around, so let's leave it here for now. We can come back and get it afterwards. Ch sure I guess that's okay. I still wasn't totally certain on what I had to, what had just happened, so I just nodded in agreement. Did Alan not notice the look on my face? Or was he just pretending? I thought about that as he gathered his things to leave.
from there, we just walked around in the night air and had a fairly casual conversation. Wait, so you don't actually own that store? Technically, no. But the actual owner is never there. He's always out traveling here and there. Wow, I totally thought that it was your place. Well, that's not too far from the truth. Like I said, the owner's never around and there's no other employees. I think they're feeling much more relaxed with Alan than I was expecting. I figured he'd be aggressive the entire time, but I guess he's capable of carrying on a normal conversation after all. If you could just be this way all the time, I'm sure you could find a nice girlfriend with, with no problem. Oh look, they have some rental bikes. Ah, you're right. These things are so convenient. You don't have to maintain them or anything. I, I usually see like those electric scooters. You just see them like just abandoned on the side of the road or like tossed somewhere. People don't really take care good care of them. That's true. That's exactly why I like things that are shared. Okay, this <laughs> is talking about shared bikes now. Huh? Shared. Whenever Alan uses that word, it sounds so ominous. I use these bikes a lot. Did you know that there's an app that will let you search for the, ex the exact one you want? Wow, really? I had no idea. That sounds really useful. I wish there was an app like this for girls. That way I could tell right away if she belonged to someone else. How exciting. <laughs> it's called stalking? I mean, there are dating apps, but usually when they find a match, they get off the app, so... <laughs> Your imagination is so... weird. I made no effort to hide how creeped out I was, but he just smiled right back at me. But you don't mind sharing a bike, right? Wouldn't it be even better to know exactly where to find your favorite one? It's different when you're talking about a bike! <laughs> Is it? Why can't you apply the same idea to a partner? That makes no sense to me. Seriously, how does someone end up like this? What does someone have to go through to develop such a strange fetish? It's almost like he's not human. <laughs> if it's from some kind of serious trauma, that's not that's not something I can fix. That calls for a trained psychiatrist. Hmm. I'm really not sure how involved I should get. I'm just a bridal advisor. My job is to take whatever information I can get and introduce uh, compatible and introduce compatible partners. And we've got the Cupid system to help with that, too, so things usually go pretty well. Actually, I did say I thought humans could handle things for themselves, but now here we are relying on machines. In a way, doing everything I can for Parasite 5 is a true test for my godly skills. Oh, this place has bubble tea. You want some? I looked up when Alan called out to me. I noticed a small food truck selling bubble tea. Wow, that does look good. But isn't it kind of filling? We want to leave room for dinner, right? Huh? Is it dinner time? Yeah, it's already 8 o'clock. Do you not usually eat dinner or something? Yeah, I don't really get that hungry normally. I like bubble tea, so I just get it whenever I'm in the mood. Ah, I see. Well, we're supposed to be on a date, so let's get a proper dinner. Okay, gotcha. Then I'll get, I'll get us two large bubble teas. Alan tried heading to the food truck, so I quickly grabbed him by the shirt. Where are you going? You're just gonna buy bubble tea after what I just said? Huh? Did I do something wrong? We're supposed to be practicing a real date, right? Yeah, that's why I was going to buy us bubble tea for dinner. That's not really dinner. <laughs> no, that's unacceptable. I mean, it's probably acceptable for some people, but it's definitely not normal. What? But there are plenty of girls who don't like eating dinner, right? <laughs> Skipping meals, that's not good. 
Well, I'm sure there are some. If you're both on the same wavelengths for food preferences and habits, it's fine. But if you ask a girl to go out to dinner with you and you show up with a couple of bubble teas, that's gonna get complaints for sure. I see. So hunger is that important to humans, huh? Okay. <laughs> Saying a line that obviously outs you as not being a human. <laughs> Why do you talk like you're not human? That's not something you can just go around saying, okay? I mean, Lynette, you're one to talk, because, like, when you first got here, you were just like, oh, what is that? Oh, Gil, do I get naked in the shower with you? Show me how to bathe. Like, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Is this how people act? <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Ah, uh, look, that food cart has hot dogs. Is that acceptable? Well, it's pretty nice out tonight, so... But other girls might have a different outlook, so you need to pay attention to their reactions when you suggest things. Right, I understand. Anyway, I'll go get a couple of hot dogs and we can have dinner in the park. Okay, very, very casual. Very casual dinner. <laughs> we ended up getting bubble tea to go with our hot dogs and headed to Los York Park. All right, let's eat. We sat down on a bench together and got to work on our hot dogs. Hmm, I have to admit this is pretty good. Yeah, bubble tea is wonderful, isn't it? I just love those chewy little pearls. I haven't had it any in a while, so this is nice. Haha, <laughs> you really love bubble tea that much? I wouldn't have expected that. Oh, really? Well, just because he seems so mature, I wouldn't peg you as someone that eats a lot of sweet stuff. Sweet? No, this is sour. Either way, it's not like I have it every day or anything. Bubble tea is sour? Uh, I wouldn't know. I haven't really had any, like, bubble tea or boba. <laughs> I was out cycling one day and just happened to notice a cart selling it. I basically got into it by chance. At first I actually was drinking it every day, but I didn't want to start putting on weight so I cut back to once a month. With a big smile on his face, Alan took another drink of bubble tea. There were some odd word choices in that conversation, but overall this does have the feel of an actual date. Eating in a normal restaurant is definitely nice, but there's something refreshing about having dinner on a park bench. If I can get rid of this weird fetish, I'm sure he can get married right away. I took a bite of my hot dog and glanced over at him. He had some breadcrumbs stuck to his lips and stuck out his tongue to wipe them away. His lips were glistening with saliva, which I suddenly realized was quite sexy. I quickly turned away. Lynette! I still can't figure out why Alan actually decided to join Cupid Corp. He's clearly satisfied with his one night stands and has no desire to get married. Does he maybe have some other reason for joining? But if so, what could it be? I risked another peek at him. He's looking down at his hot dog, which I found to be equally sexy. Alright, okay. Let's not start imagining Alan fondling hot dogs and licking his lips. Ugh. I seriously couldn't figure out figure this guy out. All I could do for now is finish my hot dog. Eventually, we continued our date and enjoyed an evening in the park. Around 10 p.m., we returned to Alan's store. Well then, ah, here's your pillow. Oh, thank you. The pillow had been lovingly wrapped and placed in an elegant paper bag. Alan handed me my gift. So, that's it for our date? Shall we return to Parasite House? Oh, about that. Actually, I live here, above the store. Would you like to see? Oh, is he gonna invite me to his bedroom? I'm sorry? I feel like we can't relax at Parasite House. Why don't we spend some time alone here instead? What? You don't ask that out on the first date, Alan? Bad boy. Bad. 
He took my arm and whispered those words to, to me seductively. I immediately smacked his hand away. This is exactly why you're not married yet. Besides, I'm not your type, remember? It's not a law that I can only sleep with girls that are my type, I guess. Well, regardless, I suggest you stick to your type and try not to- and try to find love. I'm going home. How oh, exhausting. I took my pillow and stormed out of the door. He's such a remorseless player. He seriously tried to get me into bed on our first date. Our first practice date. No matter how many times I tell him, he refuses to understand. I carried my irritation all the way to the subway station. Why couldn't you, like, put your foot down with Raul? You didn't do that with Raul, man. Ugh. Oh, Alan's perspective. Ugh. I guess I'm just terrible at this. I want her to experience the ecstasy of love. But I just can't seem to get it right. I'm completely incapable of getting rid of these bad habits of mine. And I hate myself for it. Hmm, okay. I guess, I guess it's bad habits as an incubus? Interesting. Alright, so that is it for now. Yep. Um, there is a new choice that we can get in the last chapter of the common route. Um, I did actually make a save file for that when I was doing, like, Raul's bad endings and stuff. It, it did pop up in that prologue. Um... But yeah, we're not gonna- we're not gonna select the choice that will get us the bad ending for that. I'll probably save it for, like, after we finish Alan's route. So! Um, in any case, I guess we'll just... Cut this out and we'll skip to the beginning of Alan's route. All right. Oh, okay. We're starting off in a okay in a unique situation. The angel demon face off. Okay, this is starting off a little more serious than I thought it would in the underworld. Okay, I'm very intrigued. Okay, maybe we're gonna have some like some like battle against like. Celestia and the Underworld, maybe? Um, I mean, there are gods in the Underworld. We got Hades. They did mention Hades a lot in Raoul's route, although we never saw him. <laughs> they just, like, alluded to him. Uh, because we fell down into, the, into those, like, ruins. Uh, but that ended up not actually being the Underworld. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll end things here. <laughs> Like, this is gonna be a very fantasy, fantasy-driven route. Wonder what kooky stuff they're gonna pull. I mean, we had we had Indiana Jones, we had Transformers, we had we had a spoof on. I mean, Shelby, Shelby and Ryuki are very, uh, very pretty vanilla romance, but I mean, they they had like comedy, like action comedy or rom-com comedy. All right, save here. Got the angel demon face off. I don't know, maybe. How are they gonna fall in love? <laughs> it feels like they're gonna be like enemies, like, right? Like they're. Like a. Like a, a god versus a demon? I feel like they wouldn't be very compatible. I wonder how they're gonna make this. Make this mesh. Alright, anywho, guys. I hope you guys are having a fun time with this, and I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.